This is a bubble massage. Gosh. What's up guys? Welcome back to Ride the Bean! My goal for this whole season, this season 2 of Ride the Bean, was to get to Istanbul. I don't really know why I chose that as a goal, but I really enjoyed Morocco and I thought maybe Turkey is uh, like the closest thing to Morocco that's easy to get to. And uh, a couple of days ago I finally managed to get here. So I reached my goal. Now I'm in Istanbul. The best thing about traveling the way I do, traveling on a motorcycle, is that you get a lot closer to the people and the culture and the countries and everything uh, where you go compared to when you, you fly into a place. And uh, people always come up to ask you all kinds of questions. When you stop at gas stations or restaurants or wh whatever, people always come up and ask where you're going, where you've been, how long you've been traveling for, all of these things. It's, and uh, people are genuinely curious and always very eager to help you if they can help you with anything. In every country I've been to on this trip, I've met some amazing people that have given me so many amazing experiences that I will take with me for the rest of my life. And here in Istanbul was no different. When I came here to Istanbul, I booked an Airbnb and uh, my plan was to just stay in the Airbnb, relax a little bit uh, from, uh, from being on the road for so long and uh, just go explore Istanbul by myself and see, see what happens, see what I find. But uh, it didn't really turn out that way. My Airbnb host, Mustafa, he uh, was extremely friendly. When, uh, when I came, he gave me a choice between uh, two apartments. I could stay in a basement apartment or I could come with him and stay in his, at his place where, where he stayed and so of course I chose the latter and uh, we got to talking and I told him like I had, that I had reached my goal and uh, and Istanbul was sort of my goal for this whole whole trip and so he went out and bought a cake <laughs> and surprised me with like a, a cake with uh, these sparkly things on and uh, made dinner for me and the other guys in the in the apartment to celebrate me reaching my goal. I had never talked to him before. I didn't, I didn't know him at all. And yet he did this for me. I, that really took me by surprise. That, that was uh, an incredible experience. And the next day, the next evening, he uh, took me on a bit of a walking tour around the area. This area is a uh, Fatah area. So Fatah means a conquester, you know, someone who conquests the area. This is Sultan Mehmed II, who first conquested the Constantinople. And uh, it was actually, we are in the center of Constantinople here. And uh, it died, you know, like Superman maybe. <laughs> also, this is uh, very interesting. It's back to Roman Empire. You know, it was 900, the capital of Roman Empire, this area. So they built lots of things, you know, and it's very huge and interesting. For example, this is uh, around the Constantinople, it was a wall, it was a very strong wall. And in front of the wall, it was like an, uh, a river, an artificial river. They used these walls, maybe you can see these walls, as a, uh, to lead the water to bring to, to fill this river. Like an aqueduct. Yeah, yeah. You know, with the huge walls and also they was, uh, there is a, a golden horn. We will see the golden horn also. Uh, it was closed by West, you know, Roman Empire. It was the capital and also it was the Hagia Sophia. We'll go to Hagia Sophia. Hagia Sophia was like, uh, now it's like Vatican. And Hagia Sophia used to be like Vatican. So it was very important for uh, Christians. So look at this. 
لا وي برضه النور ريان تكون انت دوك الله اكبر طارق في النور ايه Turkish <laughs> And also here, you know, they say lots of like they have lots of cheese like this. This is very strange for me to see. <laughs> see yeah. cheese like this. More, this would not be here. this would not be legal to sell in Norway like this. Oh. Oh, my friend. How are you? Good, good. good. My friend. Um, okay. Daniel, my friend. Israel, my friend. Yeah. Yeah. People are very friendly here. Yeah, yeah. It's really, really <laughs> it is. Yeah. Really, I, you know, I was here like eight months. They are very good people. Friendly, helpful. Yeah. And. Uh, it's, you know, they are kind people. They try to make connections. They are happy, you know. They don't looking for anything. Oh, that's good? Yeah, very good. This is candy? It's the traditional candy. <laughs> the traditional candy. They use it like this. And inside is like uh, walnuts. And this one is like with grape. This one maybe with the, uh, dates and you know different things. And a coffee grinder. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I wonder what the quality of this coffee is. Uh, it actually looks pretty lightly roasted. I didn't expect it to be this light, but you can see it's not very well sorted. The beans are very different colors. That's old, old coffee. Yes. Oh, that's the coffee. It comes in uh, in bags like this. Yes. But we love coffee. It's it's uh, we say it's uh, like uh, uh, spicy coffee with added spices and sardi color. Hard. Interesting. Yeah. With Osmanlı kahve. Osmanlı kahvesinde, Osmanlı, you know, Osmanlı, Osmanlı kahvesinin içinde, Osmanlı kahvesinin içinde bu oluyor. Yeah, inside, you know what's this? I don't know what you call it. Bunun, tü, bunun Türkçesi keçi boynuzu. Keçi boynuzu. Or, also hornu, you know. It's very sweet. It's like, it's like, like grape ah. when you use it. So uh, he said that in Osmanlı kahve, kahvesi. Uh, it have like this. It's very interesting. You see, so here is golden horn, and uh, you can see the Asian part. It's Asian part there, and it's Bosphor, you know. So this is a Galata Tower. Yeah. Okay. So what is this now? They call it super light. It's made from rice and milk. It's better than yes. It tastes like rice pudding. Uh, That's interesting. That's good. Nice. How did you appreciate the learn? Thank you. Yeah, that's uh, black tea. What is this? Chocolate cakes. <laughs> Chocolate cake. They say that there is uh, like <laughs> banana. Be careful, be careful. Ah, I think. Mm. Oh, that was good. 
They are good and sweet. <laughs> it's not it's very sweet. <laughs> so very sweet and very bitter. This is the point. Yeah, very sweet and very bitter. Also, you know what this used for? No. It's uh, actually because it's very hot, so we do like this. Okay. <laughs> really? Yeah, that's what the the saucers used to be used for with coffee as well. Really? Back in the day. Yeah. So I. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's good metal. And then I had an experience that I w never thought I would ever have in my life. I've never been in a mosque before. So he took me to a mosque and showed me around. That was really interesting. But not just any mosque. He took me to three mosques. One that was uh, really close to where we, where we lived. You know, it's, uh, it used to be church. It was an important church in this area, maybe after uh, Sufia. But uh, now it's like, now it's uh, a mosque. This, uh, you know, this alphabet, the Osman's alphabet was used to like Arabic, you know. But after Ataturk, they changed the, the alphabet like um, European ones. So I, now I can read this. You yeah. can't read this? Yeah, I can, I can. What does it say? Yeah, it's Bumaram Ebtedaye Fath Istanbul. It's uh, first of conquesting Istanbul. You know what Istanbul means? It's uh, it used to be Constantinople, but Istanbul it's actually Islambul. It means center of Islam. So he changed this name that uh, it was center of Christianity. So the uh, some the person who conquers here, the Syria say, oh, it's now it's center of Islam. Like this idea. <laughs> but now the Turks, they can't read this. Huh. Oh, what the? <laughs> so, uh, first of all, come here. I will show you something. <laughs> this, here, this is the oh, region. That is cool. <laughs> That's really cool. Yeah, it's same as like the Greek, you know, it was Byzantine Empire. It was good in like this mosaics. The, so it's the original. So this is from when it was a church. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, also something uh, interesting about the mosques, I mean, about the church in Istanbul, who now it's become like mosque, is about the direction. You know, the church direction is like this. It's, uh, the direction is to Jerusalem, you know, Jerusalem. Uh, Urshalim, you know, but the, uh, but the Muslims are praying. Of course, they they first first praying in Jerusalem, but after a while, they praying to Mecca. But in, in in Istanbul, the direction of Jerusalem and Mecca is almost same. And you see that's the new one. This new part. Is, uh, the direction is to Mecca, but this is direction to Jerusalem. So now you can re you can recognize that here was a church. It wasn't a mosque, firstly. And you see, it was it used to be like lots of paintings and these things, as you know, the church. This was like lots of painting and this. Because uh, is Islam doesn't like decorative. No, no, of or course, it's in, it's in Islam, you can have the face picture in mosque. But of course, as you see, it was perished, you know. It was unable to renovate it. <laughs> this is the famous Hagia Sophia, the big mosque that used to be a church. It's pretty impressive. It's a really impressive uh, building. Uh, the architect of all the mosques in Istanbul 
uh, was actually like the from Greek Myanmar Sinan is one of the most famous one and uh, it's like a copyright of Hagia Sophia you know so you will see that all the elements in the mosque is like Hagia Sophia so it was the main even uh, like doom and menorates you know so they become made the mosque uh, exactly like Hagia Sophia so all the mosques in the city are all, like yeah, mostly after conquesting this area because there is a one mosque maybe we will have the chance to see it that is like a cube it's very simple you know, it's like white wood and simple and they say this is the first mosque in Istanbul and it's because and it's before the conquesting this area but after conquesting you know the uh, architects start to helping the muslims to buy to build the mosques and these things so this is inside the Hagia Sophia. It's, uh, it's fascinating. It's really beautiful and interesting architecture. You know, first of all, you know, something that is interesting is uh, to see that the direction, as I say, it looks that it's uh, the direction is to Jerusalem. And after that, they made, we call it Mehra. So the direction is through the Mecca. If you see, Behind these shelters, you can see the Saint Maria and Jesus, barely. And uh, also, there was the four big angels, this part, that, you know, it was perished, you know, but according to Islam, you know, it's forbidden to have a picture the face and human in a mosque, you know, where, where you are praying. So they cover it, you know, like um, just the an angels and these things. Uh, of course, I talked with the person, he said that the face was almost perished, but you can see the face in just one of them. So they were like uh, four big angels. And also, uh, this place used to be for like special you know, like ceremonies and these things that the main priest and rabbi i don't know was in the center and each each one of these uh you know circles was for a person for special ceremonies i don't know what and uh if you attention you know it, during the time it was you know, 900 years of the capital of the roman empire so it was like catholic church it was it was like you know orthodox a lots of people that all they have their own uh, you know signs in it for example you, you can see the cross you know the broken cross to these patterns if you attention also for uh, you know for example even there in the patterns you can uh, see the signs of like cross and each one of them is for uh, during the period of time one of them for Christians, you know, I mean, for Catholics, for Ro Western U Roman Empire, and all this thing. And finally, it's become like mosque. After conquesting the Constantinople, it's become a mosque. They change it to, the, to a mosque. And the priests give the key to the Sultan Mehmed that, okay, it can be a mosque. But uh, after a period of time, it's become like a museum. You know? So people just visiting. But uh, recently, before like maybe five years, the Erdogan say it should be used to, uh, again, it should be like a mosque, using as a mosque. So, uh, yeah, but do you, after the conquest in this area, it's uh, become used as a mosque. Yeah. And you see a lots of mosques in Istanbul because each of uh, uh, Osman's empire, they build their own mosque, you know, and they put their, their tomb, like tomb, in front of the mosque. You know. <laughs> so this is why you see lots of mosques here. Okay, so these names uh, you will see in all the mosques in Istanbul. This is uh, Allah, you know, they call it Allah. God. Allah means the Ilah. Al, al, uh, Al is actually the. So there is maybe lots of gods, but it's the God. 
something like this in Islam. And this is uh, Muhammad, uh, the Prophet Muhammad. Uh, it is in the same level, but it doesn't mean that we believe that they are in the same, because it's God and it's the Prophet, that's all. And uh, these are, you know, the persons, you know, like the followers of, the first followers of the Prophet. And also they were, after the Prophet, they were leading the uh, followers of Islam. It's Omar, uh, it's uh, Ali, Hassan, Hussein, it's the sons of Ali, uh, and Osman, and Abu Bakr. Yeah, you see all this, because it was these four people, it was playing very important role after the Prophet, Prophet to ruling the Muslims, you know, and after that it's, uh, you know, become, you know, the, it's because it's important, the, uh, these people was very close to the Prophet, so Muslims believe that they understand well about the Prophet, so what the rules that they made, uh, we can also trust in their rules. So, yeah, it's important for Muslims that the people who was close to the Prophet, what they see what the, from the Prophet and the quotations and all these things. So this church was built or opened uh, on December 27th in 537, 1500 years ago. That's pretty impressive. And then it was, at that time, of course, it was uh, uh, a church, an Orthodox church. And in uh, 1453, I think, the Ottoman Empire uh, took over this uh, city uh, of Constantinople and changed the name to Istanbul and also took over this mosque or this church and uh, made it into a mosque. It's been a mosque for 500 plus years now. That's uh, interesting. It's, it was here was actually the like a main uh, square of Constantinople. So Constantine gathering uh, puts like this elements and also it was like horse riding. You know this uh, like the match the, um, the race of horse and these things to show their power and they gathering lots of elements from each side of his empire for example this is uh, this uh, it's bring, brought this from egypt and you see that it's like element of, that we have egypt too and so what was the name of this month blue mosque the blue mosque actually it's sultan ahmed mosque that they call it like blue mosque it's it's looks that because they use like blue colors more you know inside one of the, uh, you know, one of the first mosques in Istanbul, you know. Maybe the first one is uh, Sultan Mehmet Fatih. It's near us, we'll go there. And maybe it's like second one. I'm not sure, but it's one of the first mosques in Istanbul. Ever? In Istanbul? No, no, or? in Istanbul. Huh. Uh, the, the first mosque ever, maybe in Medina, this area. <laughs> the mosques in Islam, is, it's, wasn't, it's not, uh, you know, it shouldn't be like this, maybe. It's very simple, you know, just your attention to God, you know, that's all. It's very simple. Yeah. Yeah. It looks so that it's really affected from the church, you know because the church inside is like very huge and impressive. And as, as I say, it's like very look like the Asufia, the architect, also inside the painting. What a welcome to Istanbul. I, I, I could never have dreamed of something like this happening. People are really amazing. The next day, he asked me if I wanted to go to the jungle. I didn't really know Istanbul had a jungle. But, uh, of course, I said yes, and uh, his friend came and picked me up, and we, uh, we went to uh, uh, Baghdad Park, a really huge park outside of Istanbul, where we had a picnic. Hi! Uh, they brought me on uh, a picnic, picnic in the park. I haven't done that ever, I think. <laughs> 
This is a, this is a bit strange. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Chenna. <laughs> What's up? Uh, everything is very pleasant and very good place. Everything is good. Yes, everything <laughs> is good. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. How will okay take it with you with this call? Beautiful. Yes. Hey. <laughs> Made a new friend. You live here in the park. Borek. Hmm? Borek. That's Borek? Yeah. Uh, Borek. Uh, what are all these things? Like, what? what? Okay, like cheese. Red cheese. Is this cement? Cement. This is simit. 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 Yeah. It's Some your... kind of bread. This is Borek with potato, with uh, cheese, with meat means different kind. Uh, we Turks, uh, generally every morning we have breakfast with börek. We love it. Uh, especially in the weekends, we Turks uh, love big, uh, wide uh, breakfast. Uh, so we are here for a weekend breakfast. <laughs> Let's make some coffee. Huh? Today we have the nutty bean. <laughs> May I do it? Sure. <laughs> wow, thank you. First time. Wow. It's good. You don't normally like coffee, do you? Yeah, of course. I like your coffee especially, it was totally different. <laughs> so I will drink the second cup of real tea in my life. <laughs> <laughs> wow, it takes a lot of energy, huh? <laughs> or I do it right. Good exercise in the morning, like oh. your morning coffee. <laughs> Usually when I get up and I'm cold in the morning, I, uh, I, I grind this and I, I dance around. Nice. I do the grinder dance. Right. <laughs> So you have, for example, if you want to, you want it to be more like flour and different. So uh, yeah, you, you, you can adjust the grind size. Yes. So it depends on which method you're brewing on. Yeah. So now we're brewing for uh, filter coffee, but if you want to brew for French press, you grind it coarser. So uh -huh. like bigger particles. Wow, I think it's done. Yeah. The smell is enough for me. Can too. I smell? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yes. Hello, yes, bro. It's honey. <laughs> wow, it's, it's very really strong. <laughs> well, this coffee is totally different. Mm. Really. So you wet the filter? Because if not, it's going to taste like paper. Oh, maybe. So you wash the filter first. A little bit of a kamikaze brew, <laughs> but so what's the difference? You say it's from Brasilia. Yes. So this is uh, more. It's less fruity and uh -huh. less acidic, and more like nutty and chocolatey. Wow! Amazing. Oh, it's your brand, right? Yes. Wow. <laughs> nice, nice. Riding the coffee beans to new adventures. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's the idea. Nice, nice. Mustafa likes copy. <laughs> yeah? And this one is different. Wow, thank you. This oh, oh. Pumping coffee. <laughs> yeah, it's yes. very different, my friend. You yeah. understand that it's First of all, real smell real. is good. <laughs> good. You see? It is, it is light. Yeah. Not so much bitter. This, this is, is good. The real coffee. You know, the Nest Coffee, Nest Coffee is also, you know, the. It's not coffee actually. Mm -hmm. This it's is good. the coffee. It's like, you know, it's like hand 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 coffee. It's very different than the traditional Turkish coffee. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, our honest, traditional Turkish coffee is so much simple. They just 
put on a pot with and water just it. Yeah. The chesve. Yes, mm -hmm. Let's go for burek. Burek? Okay. <laughs> It's different type. It's with cheese, with meat, huh. with potato. Different. Yeah, it's good. And the day after that, he asked if I had ever been to a Turkish bath, and I have never been to a Turkish bath before. So uh, he said I had to come with him because he had also never been to a Turkish bath. This is going to be interesting. First time in a Turkish okay. bath. This is going to be interesting. <laughs> I don't really know what this is about. It's like a massage and uh, something. Ready? Yeah. <laughs> so this is that we will enter and then uh, we take yeah. like, yeah, and in a warm place. So after it, they do like, they say kiss. Kiss, uh, kiss of course, not kiss. And then, uh, Oil massage and then this. Nice. It's Very nice. nice. Oh, wow, this is hot. <laughs> you know, under this place is all fire. There's a, yeah, a fire yeah. going on yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. Under this place is all fire, all fear. And so it's, you know, you feel that it's very warm. Yeah. Uh, this is your first time in a Turkish bath wow. too? You know, in Turkish bath, yeah, but in Iran we have the same bath. Oh, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> This is, this is, oh, this is really hot. Yeah, so this is actually the Turkish bath, so the rest part is... Uh, this is the Turkish bath. It's really humid in here, the lens is fogging up. <laughs> actually part of the culture, they're gathering and you know, talking. Maybe they will stay four hours, they bring food, you know, they pass like how big in the It's cold, cold room. <laughs> so now it's Norway. <laughs> <laughs> Morocco to Norway. Yeah, it's, uh, I love cold here. <laughs> oh, this is a nice pool. That was fun. Yeah, and it was really good. <laughs> After one time, I feel like a kid again. Yeah. So now we, we should stay in this main hammam. Okay. For like 10 or 15 minutes in humid. So we will be prepared for. Okay. Yeah. It's real that so. very good. <laughs> when someone die, we do the same steps. <laughs> this is interesting. <laughs> it's the first time I'm ever getting a scrub down in my life. <laughs> this is a bubble massage. It feels kind of strange having an old man rub me down. <laughs> <laughs> it feels really weird. He's touching my nuts. <laughs> oh. 
Oh, crap, that was a very good thing. That was very nice and very strange and painful at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is interesting. Yeah, so amazing. <laughs> Alan was Alan. We become like Arabic people. Yeah. Tribes, yeah. yeah. <laughs> do you like Do you like the the bass? Yeah, it was a little, lovely. This is our tradition. Yeah. Tradition. I've heard a lot about it, but I never never tried it. <laughs> Thank you. Freshly squeezed orange juice. The good part is it's cold. <laughs> you feel it in your veins. Mm -hmm. I'm so ticklish. I'm afraid I'm going to kick him in the face. That's so cute. <laughs> I'm so ticklish. <laughs> <laughs> this is what you see in movies. Ooh. Like you women going to the spa. <laughs> yeah. We need like two cucumbers. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this feels really good. I was like breaking my fucking hairs in the arm. Ah. Oh, yeah. Oh. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. Relax. Çok teşekkür. Çok güzel. Yeah. It was very good. You are the best massager in the world. Well, that was very interesting. Uh, yeah. Thank you for taking me. Ah, oh, of course. Thank you for coming. And uh, yeah, it was really interesting also for me. It was my first time. Yeah, this was your first time too. <laughs> Especially <laughs> about this. Uh, Touch your rings. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they were uh, they were rough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I feel like I've been beaten up now. I've been in a fight. <laughs> <laughs> After the bath, I wanted to show him a, a little, a small piece of, of my world. So I took him to a, a couple of specialty coffee shops and uh, got him to try specialty coffee for the first time. Like he was not a big coffee drinker. Uh, but all the coffee that he, he was used to was like the, the Turkish style coffee, the dark and bitter coffee. So um, that was very interesting, introducing him to, uh, to a new world of uh, coffee. That's really nice. Very fruity, balanced. Uh -huh. This is a really, really good coffee. Wow. It's the first time I'm with you. I just taste the real coffee <laughs> in my life. What do you think of this one? Very good. It's the first time that uh, I fall in love with coffee. <laughs> 
Yeah, really, really. I didn't know that coffee can be so delicious. You know, I guess maybe it's something bitter, and that's all. It's very tasty. It was very good. Also, this one was very good. Yeah. I used to prefer cappuccino because not to smell. You know, not to feel the taste of coffee. But now I prefer coffee. <laughs> It's really, you know, I really like this taste, especially the espresso was great. Yeah? Yeah. Very nice. It was the first time I tasted like this. So this is this is uh, an Ethiopian coffee. Uh-huh. Um, it's a little bit more similar than the one we tried, but it's a little bit unbalanced. I, I think like the extraction is not perfect. Uh-huh. It's a little dark, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's too dark. Is it? Compared with the other one, it was more juicy, as you said. As you say, it's uh, a little dark and yeah. bitter, yeah. Bitter and like uh, acidic. Yeah, it's not balanced. That's the thing. That it's, uh, one was really like also sweet. And yeah, it was super not... smooth, the other one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this coffee ran through uh, like very fast, like 15 uh -huh. seconds or less. So, yeah, it's quite quite acidic. It's like a bit sour. It's not it's not really acidic either. It's sour. It's like a bad acidity. You want me to become a master? Yeah, of course. Uh, nice, good, good. I like cold coffee first of all. Smells good. I like the smells. It's very good. Better than the previous coffee. I think they smell good. Taste is not strong. No, it's not very strong. It should be like this, huh? I think uh, it's juicy. It's not like dark or bitter. And uh, I feel acidity. And I like the aftertaste. And uh, yeah, it's good. I prefer it to be more, uh, you know, more strong taste. But because maybe because of the ice cubes. Yeah, uh, yeah. And, it's an, it's, and it's an Ethiopian coffee. Oh, so Ethiopian yeah. coffees tend to be very more delicate, but very complex. So if you have, a, if you like feel, you, it, it, the taste changes quite a lot. So it, it goes from like peach right. yeah, yeah, yeah. to like a slightly lemony to to um, like bergamot or earl grey kind of. It's amazing because it just smells very good and strong, but... Now, yeah, now I feel this different. Yeah, it tastes, every time it tastes different. Why? Good, it's good. Yeah, I like it. Mustafa is from uh, Iran and just came here a few months ago um, because he works in um, the leather industry in Iran. His family has a leather business company. And he showed me how to make uh, wallets and stuff. So he made me a wallet while I was talking to him on the spot. That was really interesting. It's really beautiful uh, leather. So this is your family business. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> so you make all kinds of leather products. Yeah, that's yeah. it. Almost. Of course, it's, it's usually like more like bags and wallets. It's so we don't have yet like jackets and this and shoe. <laughs> Mostly like leather bags and wallets and yeah, stuff that's like that. It, that's it. And you know the it's all like all made by hand. You know we don't use like machines and sewing machines and these things. Because it's as I you know it's also an idea that uh, it have also like the soul. You know when you do with like machines and these things, so uh, it don't have this feeling. You know, but for example, I made it now, you know, it have a soul. 
of you know the memory and history. I think it's different feeling. And so this is why you are in Turkey now, because what was it? Uh, yeah, yeah. You know, uh, we do made letters in Iran, in Tehran, but uh, just because they sanction and these things, we don't access to international markets. So uh, I came here to have access to international markets. That's all. But we're still selling our products in Iran, in online shops. Yeah, but it's not satisfying. So we decided to have an international brand. <laughs> yeah. For example, also my friend in Italy, he registered this brand. You know, it's uh, uh, the pomegranate. What was the name of your brand? It's uh, Anar. Anar. Anar in Persian means uh, pomegranate. It's a fruit. Sure, sure. Because in Iran, it's like a history. You know, this brand, this pomegranate, it's have a lots of history. It's like, you know, it's not just a fruit. We have lots of histories about this, you know, as a something special. How long have you been working with the leather? So it's an amazing story, maybe. Because first, I was like 20, 20 years old, and uh, we start a factory in Kashan. You know, Kashan have lots of carpets, Persian carpets. And uh, we rent a factory, like a machine carpets. It's a lots of uh, machine, you know, machine carpet factories in Kashan, especially. So uh, we start like making like different carpets with the machine. And uh, we add also, we try to add leather and these things to the carpet. So it's become like a, maybe you see cow hides and we add layers and the sewing and uh, then we see that it's it will be also interesting that uh, made a carpets with like this leathers not cow hides so you know finally uh, once a time my sister bought a like tablet I say can you make a cover for it so i say of course i made a a leather cover, it's become very beautiful. So we say, oh, it can be also a good business. <laughs> so we shift on uh, making leathers, you know, leather bags and these things. So we start with just a simple cover. It's very interesting. That's cool. Yeah. The brand was Anar because in Kashan, you know, this fruit is growing and it's, it's in desert. So this fruit is something special in Kashan. So we give the name from, because also there is my grandfather's house. It's maybe back to 200 years before. It's very beautiful. If you went to Iran, you will go there also. <laughs> so, and every time we was in this house, you know, it's have like water and it's beautiful. So we are thinking about a brand and the name for our company. So. We saw that, okay, this fruit can be good brand for us. Yeah, it's become like this brand. <laughs> yeah, very interesting. So it was, first it was Anar carpets. Because of carpets, so we had like this branch, so it's Anar leather. And also, as you see the other ones, uh, in Kashan we have a type of textile. It's made by hand, you know, it's old machines. The textile is made by hand. So we, we thought that maybe it can be also like good for a style, like dress and these things. But uh, still we are working on these parts. But now we have like more work on leather bags and these things. Yeah, this is the story, you know. I didn't have any idea. And le I learned by myself. I don't go to the classes and these things. Yeah. <laughs> so, but you sell internationally? 
Yeah, you know, we start, we just start. For example, we have a uh, Etsy channel in Italy. Italy. So, uh, we sell, we start to sell, you know, some, uh, we say to our friends in Italy to sell the products and have a comments and like these things. And also, I used to send these products to Canada and also USA. We also opened a shop. Of course, my friends was there. I asked them. They opened a shop there. And we sell some of our products also there. And also, in Turkey, I yeah, we sell, for example, in Turkey. We, we, we just didn't start. But in Iran, we have a start. I mean, we sell the products. It's good. So if I want to buy uh -huh. one of your products, where do I go? Here in Turkey, you know, now you can go to Etsy shop, Etsy Italy, and uh, you know, it's our shop name is Anar Beder as our brand. So, but here in Turkey also you have go to Trendyol. You can order from Trendyol, and. Uh, we are about to open an Amazon shop. Because Amazon, you know, especially about the brand and registering, it takes, it takes time. So, yeah, best way is to go to Etsy, Italy. <laughs> okay, so also it's ready. I put the, this is where you put your cards, like this. Also, you know, the money will be here and like this. So, happy birthday to you. Are you serious? I'm serious, of course. <laughs> Thank you. This is awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Are you sure? Of course I'm sure. Why not? This is for me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You like it? Yeah, it's beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. Good, good, good. It's a pleasure for us that you carry it and you use it. You definitely. Know, as a memory. <laughs> I'll definitely use it. I don't yeah. have a wallet, so this is, really? this is perfect. Wow, well, uh, I'm happy to hear it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> You're welcome. Wow. These are some of your other products? Yeah, yeah. I made it for myself. Like, this is... Yeah, it's like belt bag and uh, it's unique because, you know, I, I write these things because I like and design for, you know, it can be also unique for you as if I write, you know, write the beans or something like this. <laughs> yeah, also it's, I made these two things when I start to coming, when I decided to come to Istanbul, I made in one day and uh, it's all made by hand, you know, all I made suits and all these things. And also we have right the from genium leather and these things. And also this kind of leather, well, it's like a kind of vintage leather. When you use it, it's become more beautiful, you know. Also, you, you know, when you scratch it, it's based on how they the tannery, you know, the tannering is different materials. Also inside you see that it's like, you know, we don't have like any other like plastic things in this. It's, it's natural leather. And it's more durable and also like a waterproof. You like it? I do. It's <laughs> cool. Uh, right. So this is the duffel bag. You see this card. That's like how we made it. <laughs> An artwork must have soul, emotion, memory, and positive energy within itself. All these qualities can be formed by the hands of a school for artists. It's good. <laughs> It's our coat like this. Our, uh, you know, our brand, we say beauty is a consciousness. Beauty is a consciousness. That's 
for example, the coats of our brand. That's amazing. <laughs> so also like this leather bags for women's things. Yeah, but it's have a, like a chain I don't have here. It's have a chain, so it's like the chain, iron one. Um, the idea is that the leather, the genium leather, is very friend with the nature, as our ancestors used leather. You know, it compared in compared with like now, it's like plastic and these things. So it's very nature friendly in the pro you know in the during the process of producing and all these things it's very nature friendly and uh it's also considered and we only use the cow leather because it's slaughtering for their foods you know and meats and these things uh, we name all the bags uh, according to the stars and uh universe thing you know for example uh this this bag is trifit, you know, it's a nebula, and also one of them is like uh, Lagoon, you know, this, it's all about the things that in the sky. For example, Lyra, it's a kind of wallet bag, it's a kind of Lyra. So wh what do you sell these things for? What, what is the price of these items? The prices, you know, for example, uh, in Iran, I see, I see the prices. It, this is it's like uh, about two hundred dollar. This one, it's a little you know the the most expensive. This one, like two hundred dollar in Iran. And uh, now, for example, in Etsy and this thing, because to start selling, you know, we have like discounts and this things just to start selling because. It really takes a lot of time, for example, especially for this one, and also it's very complex to make. Maybe it takes like 20 hours for a person to stitching all these parts, yeah, let alone the cutting and all these things. So uh, it's now it's like 200, this one, and uh, all of, uh, the other one is less than it. Really beautiful, uh, high quality leather. And he gave me, gave me these wallets. It's uh, so cool. Mustafa has given me uh, a, a better experience here in Istanbul than uh, I could ever imagine. I just thought I would come here and just relax a little bit and, uh, and walk around a bit. But because of him, I've really gotten to, to know the culture from the inside and uh, gotten to see things and places that I would never have thought about seeing by myself. So I, I cannot thank him enough for uh, all these experiences. It's really been amazing. So thank you, Mustafa, if you're watching this. <laughs> for me, this is now the end of my journey, unfortunately. The end of my two years almost living on a motorcycle. And, and thanks to Mustafa, this was the perfect ending to, to this trip. Munin and I have been through so much together in these past two years, from uh, challenging mountain roads and physical challenges to mental challenges and um, crashes and uh, attacks and sightseeing in dozens of cities and two up motorcycle adventures and introducing me to so many friends. And it is a bit sad to, uh, to, to have reached the end. Uh, it's, a, it's a good feeling to reach your goal, but now I don't really know what to do anymore. I've, I'm re I've really enjoyed this way of life. But I said when I set off from Norway back in 2021 that uh, I would keep traveling until I ran out of money. And unfortunately, now that time has come. I am almost out of money. Right now I have about 700 euro left in my account. So that is all I have to my name right now. It is 700 euro, my motorcycle and my stuff. Which should be just enough for gas and accommodation to get back to uh, Norway again. So tomorrow morning I'm packing up all my stuff and I'm uh, starting my journey home.
But before I do that, I have one more place in Turkey that I want to see. So before I head north, I'm going to Cappadocia in Turkey, which is about a three day ride from here. So I'm taking like three days to get there and maybe a day or two there. And then I start my journey north. And on the way home, I will pass by uh, Budapest. And uh, in Budapest, Marion will come meet me again for a couple of days. So we're going to stay a few days there as sort of the last, uh, last piece of adventure on, <laughs> on this trip before I just have to head straight home. So that's going to be interesting. So now I have about two or three weeks left of my journey. But this here in Istanbul is kind of the end. And then from here on out, it's just the, the end credits, basically. It's a, it's a strange feeling. So this is the end of this journey, but it is not the end of my channel. I, I want to keep making videos uh, going forward. But of course, I'm going to be in Norway for a while. So uh, it won't be much traveling in the future or in, in the future, in the, in the near future. So uh, I would like to hear from you guys. What, uh, what kind of videos would you like me to make um, when I get home? Having this channel has made my, uh, my journey so much more interesting and, and better than uh, it would have been without this channel and uh, the support from all of you guys. You have no idea how much that has actually meant to me. Like you guys have kept me motivated through like the the, the difficult times because uh, there's been a lot of difficult times. I've been struggling men mentally a lot on this trip, uh, but having to make a video has sort of forced me to actually get out of my own head and I actually just start doing stuff that I know that I would talk myself out of if I didn't have to make a video for this channel. And for every video, the feedback I've gotten, I've gotten from all of you have just motivated me to do more. And, uh, and I want to keep doing this. I, I, I really find this fun. I'm an idiot and I have no idea what I'm doing with the camera or anything, but I, I really want to get better. And, and make better videos. So when I get back to Norway now, uh, of course, I'm not gonna be able to travel for a, a while because I have to make some money and I'm gonna be stuck uh, in Norway over winter and everything. Um, I have to find a job. But I would, I would love to hear from you guys what kind of videos you would like to, to see on this channel in the future. Um, do you have any questions? for me? Is there anything you would like me to talk about? Any experiences that you're wondering about or uh, want tips about? I, I don't know. If you have any any suggestions at all, anything you want to uh, to see on this channel, just uh, leave it in the comments and uh, I'll write it down in my, uh, in my notebook and uh, get to it when uh, I can. Um, of course, I will keep traveling, but uh, it will take some time for me to, to make enough money to, to get back on the road. But in the future, this is what I want to do. I want to just keep traveling for as long as it's fun, for as long as I can. And making these videos makes that just even more, more fun and more interesting for me. But finally, I, I just want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart. Thank you for supporting me. Thank you for watching my videos, for everything. Having you guys with me has made this journey so much better. So, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give me a thumbs up, click subscribe and ring the bell if you want to see what happens next. And I will see you in the next episode video. Peace. This is a strange feeling. <laughs> I don't want to, I don't want to end. I don't want to go home. There's nothing in me that wants to go home. But, uh, that is the fastest way for me to be able to travel again, because I'll be able to make more money in Norway than I could anywhere else.
And in the meantime, I'll keep working on the channel, try to get that better. And if, uh, if the channel blows up, or blows up, if I manage to get 20,000 views per video, I can keep traveling forever. That is, uh, it shouldn't be that, dif that difficult. That is my goal, at least. 20,000 views per video. With that, I'll be able to follow all of my dreams. So, if you want to help me, share the video with anyone that you know that might be interested. And, uh, yeah, just again, thank you, thank you so much. This is, uh, this is a bit of a strange, strange feeling. <laughs> Alright, see you in the next one.